everyone. Welcome to Hate Read Podcast. I'm Anna. And I'm Em. And every fortnight here on Hate Read, one of us challenges the other to read a book that we think they will hate. Uh, this fortnight, I challenged Anna to read Kiss the Dead, an Anita Blake vampire hunter novel by <laughs> Laurel K. Hamilton. So first things first, Anna, did you finish? I did. I finished this book with so many thoughts. <laughs> I this book was great. <laughs> it was so <laughs> no, it was terrible. <laughs> I thought I would like it and I didn't. Well, and then part of me is like, I need to go back and read all of the books in between <laughs> nine and twenty one because M so M and much. I have read these books uh years ago. It's been a long time since I, I personally I think we figured out it has been like eight years or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so eight years since we read the series started the series. I think we got it what you said you got up to like nine or ten yeah around that place and so this is book number 21 in the series and needed like vampire hunter or whatever the series is called <laughs> and clearly a lot has happened oh since my we gosh, left anita oh stuff. my god she is just banging so many dudes now so many she she has such a such a large collection of sexual partners um and I think, I don't know, I kind of want to start off by listing all of Anita's powers, because I don't know if the summary will make a lot of sense if we don't talk about how yeah, much sure. she can do, or the things that I guess have even changed for us since we've read the series or been part of the series. <laughs> um, so Anita Blake started life as a uh, necromancer. She used to raise zombies for a living, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and through the zombie raising ability started solving crimes with vampires and werewolves that were involved. And she's gained a shit ton of powers along the way. She, not only is she a necromancer, but she also has the psychic abilities that allow her to communicate with her lovers, um, via <laughs> mind waves. They can, it like goes, I guess because she's a human servant of Jean-Claude who is the master vampire of St. Louis. I, yeah, I think that's where the psychic stuff comes from. Mm -hmm. it's, she says, psychic ability is like magic. You gotta believe. No, psychic ability is magic. That's, <laughs> you don't need, to, you don't need the like there. That's not necessary. <laughs> um, so he bit her a couple times and through these bites, she can almost, they can almost, cohabitate in each other's minds essentially there is a whole thing back. Uh, this is this is so difficult because there's so much there's so many so much lore to get yes. through um but i i believe from back when we were still reading this series and nita was originally part of a triumvirate with richard uh jean richard <laughs> with richard her werewolf boyfriend and jean claude her vampire boyfriend mm -hmm. and i think the three of them can like cohabit minds or something but yeah they're all very connected yeah but then she has like other psychic powers with the rest of them and i it was <laughs> yeah there was, there was a so, lot along with her psychic abilities um anita also has been inflicted with lycanthropy but she doesn't turn so because of this she has the ability to call different types of wear animals to her and i think that's kind of what gives her this psychic connection to her where lion where leopard where tiger where rat <laughs> people that she's having sex with <laughs> don't forget about the where swans oh my god I'm <laughs> <laughs> how Why? vicious a where swan <laughs> I can't. Uh, and, oh, and so I guess when she says she could call these animals to her, it just means she has some sort of control over them. Yeah, I know she's like she has a stronger the, call. She's like the queen of the leopards mm -hmm. because she defeated the old leopard king. Uh -huh, her and Mark Micah are. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and now her and Micah rule the leopards. <laughs> Nimiraj and Nimira. <laughs> Everything in this book is so fucking Which, stupid. Which, like, it might have been a little bit less stupid if no. we read from the beginning. No. Which... No, it wouldn't. It would still <laughs> no, be stupid. because it wouldn't have all been thrown at you at once. Maybe if we could have eased into this volume by volume. <laughs> and here's the thing. She's on the New York Times. This is a... 
She has been on the New York Times bestsellers list so mm-hmm. many times. People are buying this. People are reading. Oh, my God. So many people love these uh. books. <laughs> Okay. Um, um, right. She also um, she can also drink anger. The, I I I don't I, I don't think know. in the same way that vampires drink blood. If you're angry and Anita touches you, she eats your anger. <laughs> well, that was that was the the ardour thing was like that essentially, but with sex. Because, but with sex, because we were still around when that first became yeah. a thing because i think that was when we kind of started tapping that's out when yeah that that's when the series went off the rails for us <laughs> yeah because she so jean-claude's family line of vampires is all like all the vampires have extra special abilities and jean-claude's line has sexiness as their special ability essentially yeah, um Mort was there. yeah the head so vampire. <laughs> some of the vampires in his line have this thing called ardor which like you get extra powerful from sexing it up. Like a succubus, but also, basically. Yeah, essentially a succubus. But, like, also, you can kill people by sexing it up too much. Which, so, <laughs> LOL. Which will, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, lastly, um, she is just super strong, fast, and hard to kill because of her vampire yeah. rights. So, she's and more than human. She's practically a monster. And we're going to say that a approximately 200 we're times in the course of hit this that theme or hit you with that That's, over the head with that theme it's mm-hmm, going to be mm-hmm. painful that's going to be a very popular thing for people to say to anita for anita to say about herself mm-hmm. uh for the narration which is you know first person for anita to throw yeah. out about herself while she's narrating like it's, just like whole chapters of her philosophizing on whether or not she is a monster which she Who does she explore. side with? Does she side with the police or does she side with her monster lovers? Like she's she's a monster. Yeah. Like that's... she's kind of yeah, she's kind of crazy, crazy face. I I've come down hard line and eat a monster, <laughs> and that's fine because now monsters have equal rights in this world. Whereas except they don't. Not, yeah, except for it, they absolutely do not. Like the, it's. Against. It's insane. Oh my god! It's there's so much like there's so much insanity in this book that I don't even know where to like. <laughs> begin with all you can do is how embrace it. Insane it is oh my god it's so insane <laughs> so, so, insane. so the book starts out where anita is now a u.s marshal somehow she just she started off as a private zombie raising detective and is now a u.s marshal this is how those things normally work um and she's in a room interrogating a baby vampire it's like I don't know, two years old or something. Like two years of being a vampire, not that they're, they're actually a baby. Um, but don't worry, we will get to plenty of children vampires in yes, this book. Yeah. And she's trying to get information on a missing girl who is um, 15 years old and they believe being held against her will and being forced to turn into a vampire against her will. I um, mean, because she's underage, it has a whole bunch of other like connotations with it, but how she can't legally agree and how it might be like a sex thing and just weird stuff so they're trying to find this girl and this vampire is not cooperating obviously because he is afraid of a very old vampire who goes by the terrorizing name of benjamin i mean to be fair this vampire's name is barney That's so true. <laughs> i would also be scared of benjamin if my name was barney <laughs> So this vampire lashes out and injures some cops and they have a little scuffle where Anita sticks her three inch stiletto through the vampire's chest and (laughs) gets dragged across the room because her foot's stuck in his chest in a very ridiculous scene. And he, but he finally gives up the location of the house where the girl's being held and implies that it is a trap for Anita. So they're all on high alert and they all have to rush to this house. And they get there and they believe that there are injured police officers. So Anita invokes the Preternatural Endangerment Act, which allows her to kill any undead on site just because she thinks they might be in a situation where someone could be harmed. Which would be the part where I would say that, you know, supernatural beings absolutely do not have the same rights as humans because (laughs) that's insane. That's insane. Like, yeah, if 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 we're accepting as a conceit, which This book makes clear many, many times that vampires are essentially the people they were when they were alive, just undead and with magical powers. Mm -hmm. It's insane that 
this woman has the ability to just decide to kill people. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and she's the one too that's like shacking up with all of them and have the most reason to be like, hey guys, not all of these undead are monsters. I would know. Right. Which I think she she has like something to do with the I, I'm not gonna lie, I definitely went and looked at the wiki for this book series and mm-hmm. tried to learn more about it. Um, <laughs> there's she has been pushing for better legislation or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think they even mention that in this book that she's like trying to be an advocate, but at the oh, same right. time, she's still she's still murdering people. Like Yeah, she's, she's not a she's good a murderer. One. Yeah. <laughs> so they go into this house and they discover I would think two dead cops and one of them's injured. So they bust into this room and Anita just shoots some kids who later it turns out they're vampires, but she didn't know that when she shot them. Legit. But also, even if they were kids, she would have been allowed to shoot them anyway because she's allowed to shoot anyone who's helping the vampires when yeah, they're doing these things. even if they're human. Right, so this is insane. Yeah. This is, no one should have that much power. And especially not Anita Blake. Yeah. Anita, Anita's a little bit gun happy. Trigger happy, let's say. So they save the girl, but then they look around the room and they're like, all these vampires are like average people. Not they're their mom. old and young and fat and just average looking. Like, not the beautiful vampires I normally have sex with. <laughs> Anita's like, I don't want to fuck any of these. What's going on? <laughs> this isn't normal. She just looks around and she's like, ew. <laughs> Ew, these are all fives. <laughs> Where are the tens? <laughs> At least a nine and a half. They're like at Asher. the circus of the damned with your boyfriends. So, okay. <laughs> so they save the girl, but then, like, this one cop kind of goes off the handle because he's all mad about the dead cops, which, okay, sure, that's that's a legitimate thing. But instead of letting him, so this is where this is where Anita draws the line. The man's about to punch an innocent vampire, but she steps in and drinks his anger (laughs) in the most hilarious paragraph in this book. I hope this is the paragraph you were talking about when you said you... No, there's a different, there's a different moment that I was talking about. Oh, you might have to share that one then, because I don't think I captured it, but this, I just have to read the whole paragraph. It's a little bit long, but it's totally worth it. I drank down his anger as he breathed, heavy and loud, through the pounding of his heart, the pulse and beat of his blood, and as I swallowed the thick red fire of his rage, I smelled his skin so close, sweat and the scent of his fear, which was what lay under all that anger. Beyond that, I smelled his blood beating just under the bitter sweetness of his anger, so that Billings was like a piece of cupcake with dark, bittersweet chocolate icing that could be licked away to the warm, moist cake, and then the hot, liquid center where the sweetest, thickest chocolate lay waiting like some hidden treasure that would make the anger even tastier. All I had to do was bite through that sweet, salty skin of his wrist that was just above my mouth that beating pulse so close to my hands where they encircled his arm. (laughs) Which, like, not not only is that stupid, but I also really don't know what's happening there. No, I don't either. Right? Like, is she... I thought it was, like, a metaphysical thing, but then it seems like she's actually biting him. I don't know. She turned his arm into a delicious cake and just went to town on it <laughs> just... i just i don't understand why what whatever no okay so that wasn't the point where i broke it was uh, about 10 pages later <laughs> so the uh vampires that are part of this group that they've uncovered mm-hmm. start talking about how they're kind of unhappy with the status quo in the in the city and yeah you know, the vampire society at large. Mm -hmm. So one of the vampires is talking to Anita and she's like, oh, you look, or you're older than you look. Mm -hmm. And he says, can't you tell my age? And she said, 20 years dead. That's why the 80s haircut. And he says, I don't have enough power to grow my hair long after death like the vampires closest to you. (laughs) Your master steals energy from me from all of us and uses it to heal his people and grow his long black curls out for you. (laughs) So fucking Jean-Claude. Jean-Claude, who 
we're familiar with. We've been around Jean-Claude. He's been around since book one, you know? Yeah. Uh, He is apparently stealing people's metaphysical energy in (laughs) in order to get Anita more in the mood because she likes her guys to have long hair. Uh Like, that is... Yeah, that is an insane premise, and it comes up multiple times in this book. The hair is mentioned Mul- so many well, times. Well, the hair is mentioned a lot of times, but these vampires bring it up multiple times. Yeah. They're like, "We want oh, hair. We, we want hair too." Like, we want to be able to change our hairstyles. This is the sticking point. We're fine with Anita murdering us, but you know the hair thing—that's really that's really a problem for us. We're gonna need to get. <laughs> better metaphysical styling Which that's is, really what we want why don't they just cut it into a more like classic hairstyle right, why does right, it just, have to be long and feathered why can't you just settle right for like you have options but yeah. he's just like no this might come back around this might come back around i'm gonna leave it like it is <laughs> so stupid very stupid but yeah, that was that was the point where I was like, nope, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. This book, it was it was pretty exciting and action packed until that point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Anita is just basically like they're trying to evacuate all of these vampires and also get information from them. But all the vampires want to talk about is how evil Anita and Jean Claude are. Anita for being. The executioner is what everyone refers to her as because she has killed so many vampires. They liken her to um, the the war horseman of the apocalypse because she has killed so many more of them than death would have. Which that makes no sense. That you don't. Mm, mm, yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, like <laughs> everyone dies. Right. Not everyone right. goes to war. <laughs> right. So anyway. So everyone is afraid of her, basically. And I think this is, again, where we get some long paragraphs and pages and chapters of Am I a Monster conversation? Because the monsters are scared of her. And what do you use to fight a monster but another monster? Blah, blah, blah. And if you took a shot every time Anita called herself a monster, you'd be drunk by like 30% of the way through this book. Oh, yeah. You'd be maybe dead. <laughs> <laughs> you would join the monsters. Yeah. <laughs> so then some... Something happens. I think one of the vampires tries to escape. And because they use their vampire powers, all the holy symbols in the area went crazy. Um, Which, because holy symbols only work, A, if you believe in them. And B, if a vampire or other undead uses their powers. um, Obviously. It can't even be subtly. It has to be super obvious. So at that point, like, oh, you're you're boned. (laughs) Which also... The whole, oh, holy powers or holy objects only work if you believe in them thing. Wouldn't everybody then believe in them? Like You think. You you see them working mm-hmm. when other people do it. So you know it works. So then you would believe in it. Like what? Yeah, but there are how several officers lose, how, that have. How do they lose their faith in this world? I don't understand. I don't know either. There's some, there, there are a couple officers that they talk to you about having crises of faith and. Yeah. Um having to take them off the force because their holy symbols won't work for them if they don't believe anymore. But like, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. I feel like if I saw someone with a glowing cross, I would be pretty convinced that, you know, that belief system is working. I I don't know. Yeah. Or like even that you won't have to believe, but if someone holy enough blesses your cross right, and it'll work right. i mean so like yeah that there's that's pretty solid proof for religion in this world but it doesn't work for some people it works better for others and all the vampires when they see these holy symbols go crazy and everyone starts shooting and they end up killing a ton of them all hell broke loose oh and uh, well and then so they're trying to resuscitate some of them that are only kind of dead and anita discovers another power so she's trying to help some of these fallen oh vampires that's another thing that you could get drunk dead. off of real fast if you took a shot every time a vampire or every time anita says oh i have to save you before you die and the vampire responds i'm already dead like the number of times <laughs> goes, that happens no in this you're book. not no you're not really dead you're undead like mm. yeah so her new power is that she can latch on to the essence of whatever consists of a soul in a vampire and and make it flare back to life as it's fading out 
And so she does this for one person, and then she tries to do it for another, and the guy's like, no, don't save me. I don't want to become one of your slaves. I want to be free. And then dies. (laughs) (laughs) Because I guess, well, we can get to that later, I guess, to why they want freedom. But basically, all of these vampires are all these young new vampires that are of different ages and sizes and shapes and everything. And aren't perfect tens. Yeah. <laughs> the these, these eight fellows. <laughs> they want freedom from vampire masters. That's Seems out. reasonable, that, honestly. Yeah, yeah, like there's not really any reason given to why or how this all started or anything. So that ends basically any semblance of a plot for I don't know how much rest of the Yeah, book. now the we get to deal just... with what we really care about. Anita and her boys. Yes. Now we get the boy toy parade. <laughs> Anita spends the next couple of chapters talking to some of her boyfriends. And that's uh, that's really it. That's it. Mm-hmm. I yeah, mean, I wish I was joking, but there's no other substance. There's no chapters. and not only is there no substance, like there there's no connection to the plot that we were just introduced to. Mm-hmm. Literally, it's a parade of boyfriends. It's just they're introduced, you get two or three paragraphs talking about their body, their hair, mm-hmm. their eyes. It's long, by the way. It's yeah, all their hair is long, all their bodies are hot. Like we don't need all this. All of their Most eyes Most of them are strippers. All of their eyes are magical colors that don't exist in the real world. We've got yeah. lavender eyes, we've got yellow eyes, we've got cat mm-hmm. eyes, not like yeah. eyeliner. Blue tiger eyes. Tiger eyes. Also yeah. leopard eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Multiple but sometimes types. it's a sad reason for them to have leopard eyes. Yeah. Sometimes their boyfriends were forced to be leopards for too for long. For too long. And didn't know if they could ever become human again. So their eyes so remain their leopards eyes. still. Yeah, like, that's kind of good, though. At least it's not like they have a fucking tail forever or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Of the options, that's probably the best one. Yeah, or ears, whiskers. Like, le- yeah. Leopard ears. Yeah, like, I'd go, I'd go for eyes anyway. I'd that's pick like, eyes, too, I think. Hey, at least they all have two. Nikki only has one, so. Oh, right, right. Nikki and his one eye. I think we should just... For this part, and I mean, mm-hmm. you can d- do something else if you were like, no, I really want to get into this. I think we should just go through all of the guys in this book. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Good, like, good. There's, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at this point, we need to introduce or at least mention all of Anita's boyfriends that are featured in this book. Because and there are, a lot of there are more that are not in this book. We mm-hmm. couldn't. We couldn't get to all of them in just 300 pages, guys. Yeah, that's... sadly, the were swan is not featured in this The were swan's not in... Uh, None of Only the mentioned. werewolves are. No, Richard. Richard and his big unmentionable areas mm-hmm. are not <laughs> in this book. And, They're and on the outs because he's overprotective. Yeah, the other uh, werewolf, Jason, is not. Which I know mm-hmm. about Jason because one of the other options for this the book that we were going to read was going to uh-huh. be his book. That's uh-huh. another short one. That's, I think, book 23. But mm-hmm. I looked it up and it's essentially this part of the book for the whole book it's oh, literally just oh. an orgy no thank <laughs> for you the entire book <laughs> this was this was already too much to handle okay so we we'll start with the og boyfriend john claude he is the master vampire of st louis he's still my favorite i'm not gonna lie yeah yeah okay and he's the only one that didn't get a sex scene so it was like right. what's, the point, even? Right. what's the point what's even? why am i here he was like all geared up to, to have a lot of awesome vampire human sex with Anita, and but then, then he had to go and fuck someone Asher else instead. To have sex with you instead. He's God, like, hey, bye. terrible. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> redeeming about this book. <laughs> um, mm. And he's he's he is the owner of the Guilty Pleasures and Circus of the Damned, which are two nightclubs. But well, one's a one strip club. One, yeah, one's a strip club and the other is like a circus for a girl. Isn't he also the owner of a dance club that's like actual dancing, like Dance oh. Macabre or something? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Who yeah, cares? Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right because that's where she wears the cherry sweater to. <laughs> Anita's known for her stupid outfits. <laughs> but you know, they were really tame in this book. I didn't have any well, except I mean, for the night dress. Yeah, to be fair, when we were reading the first ones, they were already out for like 10 years. So the fashion that's was true. really behind for us. But. I think she's kind of caught up to eh, more Ish, or less. Yeah. Ish. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, Jean Claude is also known for his beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous, puffy shirts. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, literally, literally every every time he's on page, he's wearing a shirt with just lace flowing down the front of it uh, and puffy which, sleeves. Which is like supposed to be a callback to when he was like an actual person in however many centuries ago. But like, dude, it's 2017. Update. Or Update no, when was this book written? 2012. Come on, dude. Ugh. Get some new get some new duds. material. <laughs> and also Anita specifically mentions every time that she goes, because this is a yeah. thing I remember from the other books, but it happens mm-hmm. in this book too, that when she goes to hug him and his puffy shirts, that it's scratchy and not actually comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Which like, what's the point? What are you doing? <laughs> if you'll grow your hair out for your main squeeze, but won't change mm. your shirt, <laughs> maybe you could steal some of those vampire powers for <laughs> to make your shirt, shirt look better. <laughs> Um, and then, so then her next closest main squeeze is Micah. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, we mentioned earlier is the were-leopard king, um, to her were-leopard queen. And he was introduced around, I looked all of up, like, Mm -hmm. I looked up when all of them were introduced, and him and Nathaniel were both introduced around books 8 through 11, so I'm not Mm -hmm. sure if we tapped out before... I remember Micah, but I don't remember Nathaniel. See, I remember Nathaniel, but I don't remember Micah. Hmm. 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 <laughs> Odd. <laughs> so strange. <laughs> anyway. I like how a lot of this podcast is just us talking about when we read these books yeah. 10 years ago. <laughs> it was our journey. <laughs> <laughs> to bring this to you today. Yeah. It was a long and arduous path. <laughs> Um, Micah was the one that was trapped as a leopard and didn't know if he could become human again. And Micah is also the only one who is not tall. Yeah, he's her but, size. But he's got a huge dick. <laughs> wing, 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 wing. <laughs> it's, it's intimidatingly large to the point where even some women have turned him down for sex because oh. of it. What a what a trouble this guy has. What a problem this but, guy has. But Anita has the perfect vagina. Just and great. It's just deep enough for Micah. Well, only in certain long. positions. Even oh, even her true. in some positions, it's uncomfortable. Even her. Can you mm-hmm. imagine? Can you imagine? Anita Blake. <laughs> but it's okay because his dick bends, I think, was what <laughs> happened. <laughs> that was so awful. I was so confused. Was that what was happening? It, was that yeah, what was happening? Yeah, it was like it was being squished up. Yeah, and, it was like folding back on itself. That's what? Yeah, That's insanity. I, don't, I don't know who was enjoying that. Nobody. Um, but Nobody. the reason I remember Micah from the earlier novels is because she made a comment about have, how having sex with someone, this, having missionary style sex with someone the same size as you was much more intimate than any other sex she'd ever had. Okay. There's that. <laughs> and then Nathaniel, who's kind of part of the package deal with Micah and Anita. Um, I don't remember his deal. Um, he is, see, and this is the thing, I think he was introduced before Micah because he was one of the were-leopards that were were-leoparding about when there was the other were-leopard king. <laughs> <laughs> but he, sure. he's, like, super submissive, and he likes watching, and he's bisexual, unlike Micah, who's no, just- No, he's heteroflexible. No, Micah's heteroflexible, Nathaniel's oh, bisexual. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. But Dev is the true bisexual. But Dev is the true bisexual, and we will get to that comment in a minute, because <laughs> I have things to say. Yeah. And then my favorite boyfriend of Anita's. If and you by say favorite, what you think I'm, I'm going to say, I'm disgusted gonna, by. Okay, I was about to say Anna. <laughs> Do not. <laughs> no, um, Sinric, who ah! is her, <laughs> who, who prefers to go by the nickname Sin, spelled S-I-N. He's currently 18 years old, but... They started fucking first... when she was 16! Or no, when yeah. he was 16! Yeah, yeah. So, apparently, a couple years ago, he was he was used as a distraction for Anita during someone's grand master plan, and they didn't want Anita in the way, so they quote-unquote mind-fucked her to fuck Sinric, who was 16 at the time, and he lost his virginity to her. And somehow just became soul bound to her in some way. And so now they have sex a lot, but Anita is very uncomfortable about it. And it is 
the grossest. It is so gross. It's so disgusting. I. It's. Uh, she goes to his parent teacher conferences and then she, comes home and bangs him. That's not okay. That is never okay. I mean, okay. Yeah. First off, Anita is 30. Like, let's be very clear about this. Yeah. This is not a, you know, 19 year old, 16 year old situation, which is still, in my opinion, a little bit gross, but. Mm-hmm. You know, at least in the realm of acceptable, but yeah. she is a thirty-year-old woman who is who banged a sixteen-year-old. That's not okay. Who banged a sixteen-year-old yeah. in Las Vegas, and then he moved to St. Louis for her. That's insane. Yeah, that's insane. And then she and was I, like, "Come live with me with all my other boyfriends wait, that I constantly have sex with." And I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Like, I know that the age of consent in both of those places is sixteen, seventeen, sixteen for Las Vegas, seventeen for St. Louis, but. You can't bring a minor across state lines to have sex with them. That's illegal. That's not <laughs> That's good. super illegal. Yeah, so he's 18 currently. Yeah, he moved in with them a year ago. Mm-hmm. So he would have been 17. Yep. I'm so glad I didn't read those books because that's that's crossing too many lines. That's so that's so gross. And okay, I mean, again, age differences not a f- Okay, I'm trying not to be like it's yeah, gross like, okay, when you date if, anyone who, you know, but it's like... If you are an adult and you are comfortable and you know your partner and, you know, you're doing things responsibly, an age difference like that isn't insurmountable. Right. But he was 16 and she was he 28. Was That's was not 20. okay. And also there was magic that made them get together and magic that continues to bind them together. So there's a lot of consent issues going right. on i mean there's a lot both of consent with Cindric issues in and nikki book. yeah can we can we real quick just sideline to the fact that every time there's a sex scene she brings up the fact that she has a safe word she just can't <gasps> say it right now She's yeah just, her boyfriends don't let her say it they, they kiss her so hard that it's impossible for her to say the safe word that it's not yeah then you need to not have that be your system you need a different system yeah. that's not yeah. okay that part also creeped me out quite a bit because she was like in pain and they were right. like, no, you'll like it. I Let promise. Let me just make out with you so hard what? that you like, they, they say their mouth is like a gag essentially, which mm-hmm. this is the part of the podcast that isn't funny. It's just us being super disgusted with stuff in this book. Yes. Just so amazed that this got published and people read it and enjoy it. And then there are sequels to it where I assume the same things happen over and over again. I mean, I don't know if she's, going to add any more 16 year olds to her roster but oh god i hope not. i did like the part where she's at breakfast and she's going around kissing all of her various boyfriends because yeah. they have to kiss and yep. let me see if i can find it hold on oh, da, 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 da. okay so they're at breakfast and she's going around kissing all of her various boyfriends and she is kissing nathaniel and it's very chaste by their usual standards because they're in front of their house guests who have a child with Mm. them who Mm. is very young and she says of the child that uh we babysat matthew sometimes he insisted that he get a kiss from me every time i saw him but what creeped me was that he wanted a kiss on the mouth like the other big boys because all the big boys kiss nita his mother Mm. monica vespucci thought it was cute i didn't like okay good glad you have some standards yeah i'm glad three is too young for you anita (laughs) And also, so in her in her first sex scene, the one with Micah and Nathaniel, where she finally goes home and she's kissing all her boyfriends and she only wants to have sex with two of them, she makes a reference to these stuffed toy penguins that she still oh has literally God. all over her bedroom. Oh this is something from the very first book. For some reason, like, stuffed penguins are her security blanket and she loves them and she used to sleep with a stuffed penguin and she has, like, everything in her house has a penguin on it. She's got coffee mugs with penguins on it. She's got throw pillows and blankets. Her her um, sleeping gown has a baby penguin on it. Like, she's obsessed with penguins. And to think that she has this, like, giant king-sized California bed and she has this, like very frequent and very enthusiastic sex in front of all these stuffed penguins (laughs) just made me laugh really hard (laughs) and then we have nikki Mm. who we've kind of made reference to he is is he just a normal dude no he's a were lion oh he's the king of the were lions Uh, oh yeah because he makes references to his rex he's the king of the the were lions (laughs) yeah so we're gonna keep uh, saying that like it's a normal thing yeah he's the rex 
He um he only has one eye, and so he wears his bangs down in a sharp triangle, a sharp blonde triangle, like an anime character. That's not and that doesn't work in real life. That's that no, does not work. You can't. I'm just imagining a massive amount of gel and like totally immovable hair. <laughs> yes, he just has a hair eye patch. Which just yeah. get an eye patch. Get an eye patch. Yeah, that's much better than your nasty haircut. But yes, he is he is described by Anita as an anime character several times in the book. But he's the super strongest of all of her bows, and that makes for fun sex for her. And then there is Asher, who is an incredibly jealous vampire, almost as old as Jean Claude. No, older than Jean Claude. Older than Jean Claude. Yep. Yeah. Um, who also has sex with Jean Claude and Deb. He was. Asher was like Jean Claude's lover two hundred years ago, Mm -hmm. and he was back in the books we read too. He was mm-hmm. very jealous of everybody all the time, always. Everybody. But now he's okay with people sharing Anita. Essentially, he's okay with his boyfriends banging Anita, but not mm-hmm. anyone else, which is very convenient for Anita. Yeah, yeah. She loves the uh, arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> Working out great She's for her. She's getting what she wants. Great. <laughs> um, and then there's Deb, or his, which is his nickname. Which is his nickname his for real his name nickname. Is Mephist- what is it? Mephistopheles? Mephistopheles, but Dev is his nickname for his nickname because his oh, nickname right. is Devil, but no one calls him that. They all call him Dev. Why? Why? Why have so many names? Why? Just Why are you Dev. doing that? <laughs> and he is a were person of he's some a, kind or a vampire? I think he's a were hyena, but I might be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, were hyena is hard thing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's a were hyena. Let me, hold on, let me um, look it up real quick. There are too many types of wear in this book for me to keep track of them. Too oh, no, sorry. Different... He's, he's a wear tiger. He's another wear tiger. Okay, he's, he's another he's, one of her tigers to call. He's the golden wear tiger, because that's oh. the other thing. All the tigers have different colors, including right. blue. We didn't mention that Sin is a blue tiger. So his hair's blue. Which, okay, sure. And there was another tiger that was like a black and white striped tiger, where it dip- Depending on what color he transformed into, that would change his regular hair color. So sometimes it was black hair with white adornments, and the other, and sometimes it was white hair with black adornments. Yeah, I can't remember what his name was, but he was, I don't know. Either. He was in there. He was not one of the boyfriends. Yeah, he was yet. just a guard. Because that was another thing they had. They have bodyguards, Anita and Jean Claude, but she doesn't take them to work, which is where she is most which of the is time. Where so, she needs bodyguards. What's the point. <laughs> It's to watch them have sex. Right. They like and to that. make it more complicated to have sex because some of her boyfriends and girlfriends, oh, we haven't gotten to the girlfriend yet. Some oh, of, yeah, Jade. Uh huh. Yeah. Jade. But some of them like being watched and some of them do not. So that gets complicated. <sighs> so many preferences. Yeah. Jade. Jade is Anita's one female lover. Yes. Her one exception to the rule, which her, makes Anita heteroflexible. Heteroflexible. Which is the term we're going to use over and over in this book because we're not comfortable with bisexuality, even though we pretend we are. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the other thing is Anita has this woman that she invites to bed. But again, as with Cynric, she's very uncomfortable by it. I'm like, it. then stop, stop, stop having sex yeah. with them. That's the solution. Clearly you don't this need girl to. is in love with you and right. feels huge attachment towards you. Why would you lead her on if you're uncomfortable with her right. and your relationship with her? And you don't want to have sex with her. Just stop having sex with her. It's really yeah. very simple. <laughs> Sex with Anita is, like, treated as a burden for her at times. She's like, oh, I don't really want to have constant sex well, with this person. Jade, Why can't I get them out of my life? Because Jade is, like, Jade was rescued from another master vampire who treated her terribly and abused her. Mm-hmm. And because of that, she does not like men, does not like having She's sex with men, does not want to be around men. But Anita apparently keeps forcing her into situations where she is naked with men around and i'm Mm -hmm. why are you doing that to her knock it off she's not a very good um therapist (laughs) which to be fair she's not supposed to be one so no because that would be a girl thing to do and not a guy thing and anita's one of the guys (laughs) something that she stresses highly in this book she doesn't get into all that emotional crap like women do oh man are we missing any of the boyfriends 
think those are all the ones I'm pretty sure she has sex with. And then Anita also questions whether she is loving too many people at once several times throughout the book. Oh, and she everyone also, in the world is screaming yes. <laughs> <laughs> she also questions, should I continue to be a cop? And everyone in the world is screaming, no, probably not. You should stop. Yeah, you've uh, compromised several investigations now by <laughs> you're terrible at this. Blurting out information to everybody. Right. Okay. Oh, we had to talk about um because we talked about Dev, but we didn't talk about how she refers to Dev's sexuality, which was oh, the thing gosh. that set me off. Yeah. All of her boyfriends are okay hooking up with each other. I think with very few. Like I don't. I I'm pretty sure they're all okay with being in sexual situations with each other and hooking up to some extent. So I think they prefer different combinations, though, which makes creates it... more complications for Anita's sex life. Right. But she is adamant that very few of them are actually bisexual, mm-hmm. that they're mainly just heteroflexible like her, uh, which, whatever, okay, I'm, I'm not going to get into <laughs> one of the many things I'm not going to get into. Hold on, let me pull it, because I'm, I'm trying to find this. But So Dev and Asher are a couple within this giant polyamorous blob. Um, hism. Anita's hism. <laughs> yes, her hism, uh, which is like a harem, but with guys, except a harem isn't called a harem, so I don't know what she's trying <laughs> to do there. But in this, it was almost clever. It was almost clever, but it wasn't. Um, in this hism, Dev and Asher are a couple, and it's becoming a problem because Asher does not want Dev to have sex with other people besides him and Anita. But Anita is too busy with her 18 other guys, so Dev very rarely gets any of that lady loving. Uh, So he really, really wants to hook up with some girls, but Mm -hmm. Asher is unhappy about that. Asher attacks Anita in a rage during all of this, in a kissing rage where he makes out with her (laughs) and bites the shit out of her face so that she can't give any of the other guys blowjobs. (laughs) in his fury over the dev situation uh so all of that in the uh conclusion of this dev or anita goes over to comfort dev and he dev is like oh was it stupid of me to think that he would understand and anita says no not stupid for some people one person is enough but you he rubbed his face harder against my breast you are the most (laughs) truly bisexual person i've ever met (laughs) You really don't have a preference for boy or girl. You just like the person. Someone like you isn't going to be happy without both. Which, that, okay, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. The, you just said he doesn't care about gender. So why would he not Mm -hmm. be happy without both? That doesn't make sense. The thing you just said contradicted the thing you said right before it. Number one. No, it's bi means two, so he needs both M. Right. (laughs) Right. I forgot. I forgot. He's a two-sexual. Bisexuals can never be in a monogamous relationship. They are greedy sluts who need to sleep with everyone. That's, Mm -hmm. that's what. They're double dipping and it's not fair. That's what a true bisexual is, guys. I'm sorry you had to hear it from us. <laughs> oh, it made me so mad. It made me so mad. Wow. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't know. I don't know what like what school Anita Blake went to to learn about different types of um, sexuality. Can we talk about how she thinks she's an expert on polyamory also? And she very clearly is not yeah. because she says stuff that is incorrect. She... Uh, <laughs> She she constantly any time and here's the thing there's a lot of times polyamory comes up in this book in her discussions with her various cop coworkers and whatnot and the way yeah, they talk absolutely. about it is literally like a textbook she'll be like oh well actually polyamory just means da 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 and I'm like please stop um but <laughs> in this whole Asher having a jealous hissy fit thing in the aftermath of him having the hissy fit he and Jean Claude are having a talk with Anita. And they're like, well, what do you want from us? And he says, I want you to have only Anita and me. And Anita responds, that's closed, Polly, I said. Nathaniel explained it to me. It's like monogamy with only one other person added. Which, no, it's not. That's not what that means. You, <laughs> that's, you're incorrect, number one. And also, why are you explaining it to me like a textbook? This is so weird. That's the only way to speak to that. Never mind. I don't know where I'm going with that sentence. <laughs> well, it's okay, because Laurelka Hamilton didn't know where she was going with this book. Yeah. 
No, she knew exactly where she was going. She just wanted to write sex scenes, but needed some sort of plot. Did you get the to feeling? Surround did the you sex. get the feeling that she wrote all of these scenes like separately and then kind of threw them together when she realized she needed a book? Yeah, because she's constantly just writing sex scenes and then has to really struggle with the plot. Like she just has a whole folder. Full I'm pretty of sex sure. Scenes yeah, and computer. she just picks them out because there's background info that they give us multiple times. Yes, that bothered me so much. <laughs> like I'm heard, like, you already told me this. <laughs> we heard about how Sinric was going to be on the uh, preternatural football team multiple times. <laughs> we got, like, yeah. multiple uh, explanations about, like, Nathaniel and his long hair and whatever. Like, there were so many instances where she just repeated things that she had told us three chapters ago. Yeah, it was not very well organized book. And I was like, well, why didn't the editor catch that one? There was editor? no editor. <laughs> yeah, it was Laurel K. Hamilton. They're like, well, this book. thing's going to print money, so just send it on out. Why waste time? Yeah, we've already got all the all the fans. This is book number 21. <laughs> They're not stopping. They're, yeah, really. They're already this deep into it. If you are a Laurel K. Hamilton fan, get out. You can save yourself. You need <laughs> to leave. <laughs> get out while the going's good. Or, you know what? If also this sounds like your cup of tea, go, go for, for it. it. Go for it, man. Go for it, and then write us an email on how this <laughs> series ends. Oh, so we don't have to read. Oh, it. I looked up. We're gonna. Oh, we're gonna talk about what happens with the rest of the series up to the twenty fifth book. Let's just do that. Let's just say so. Nothing else happens in this book. Um, Anita has a lot of sex, and they kill some vampires. And it turns out between that, sexes, it turns out that the vampire. <laughs> Between sexes. It turns out <laughs> that the vampire who started the whole Benjamin. vampire rights freedom thing is this really old, powerful vampire who, named Benjamin, who <laughs> uh, thought that everyone would behave themselves. And actually, the only reason they were behaving themselves is because he was so old and such a powerful vampire. So they were behaving when he was around. But once he left, they yeah. all started murdering people. So, Which, like, how does he not understand his own powers? He's been alive for centuries. Because he, like everyone else in this book, is a moron. Yeah. Um, and the other notable thing is that um, Anita has sex so hard with Nikki that she, <laughs> she kills him. And, I... and they have to bring him to life with, um, what are those things called? Uh, defibrillator paddles. Yeah, defibrillator. Yeah, they have to bring him back to life, but she sexed him so hard. She sexed him to death, guys. She absorbed Which, all of his energy. And uh, I, I mean, I know this is this might be ruining a little of the mystery of this podcast. I know we ask at the beginning <laughs> if we finish the book, but we actually text about it yeah. constantly because um, it's usually a huge relief. Like I'm fucking finally yeah. done. So Anna <laughs> told me when she was finished with the book, and I, <laughs> I was texting her when I read this scene. And I literally could not stop laughing for a good 10 <laughs> minutes. I couldn't stop laughing because she sexed him too hard, you guys. She sexed him it to death. It was three chapters of sex, to it, be fair. Oh, yeah. Shower sex, bench sex, against the wall sex. Mm-hmm. 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 Three different types of sex. Yeah. Because Nikki can get it up again real quick. That's what he's good at. Because he's a lion. <laughs> He's a sociopathic lion. Oh, yeah, he's a sociopath, too. Sure. Yeah, which, again, like, kind of brings up this whole thing of consent. Like, does he actually want to be with her? Or does he, is he just bound to her because of this magic? And so he desires her like that. And these are even questions that need to ask him. Yeah. And Nikki's like, I don't oh, know. No. Who knows? And they just have sex. Let's so. just <laughs> Whatever. Uh. And the mystery is solved. Well, actually, yeah, the mystery is solved because it's Benjamin. And they make him promise to stop. The end. The end. What a great book. Yeah. So I want to ask but you. But there was so much more to talk about. There was so much more to talk about. It. Um, so I want to ask you, because I, like I said, I went and looked at the Wikia of Anita mm-hmm. Blake um, and mm-hmm. looked at what happens in the next few books. So let me. Yeah, because this is very much like a setup novel, it felt yeah, like. Yeah, this was a between the, the novel, I feel plotline. like. Also, I can't believe that only seven years have passed in the book world. Right. Like, I feel like <laughs> it should be way more. But that's just because the first books came out well, in the 90s. But if more than seven years had passed, I mean, if they passed, like, one book a year or something like that, she would be 40-something, and no one wants to write about that. <laughs> Grass. <Yes. laughs> uh, in the upcoming book, so this is book 21, she has published up to 25 now, plus some novellas, which, whatever. Of these four options, which one okay. do you think does not happen in one of the upcoming books. 
Okay. 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 Option one. It turns out that Anita is actually the heir to all of the powers of Marmi Noir, the mother of darkness who died a few books ago. Number two. Okay. Anita's old mentor, Manny, turns out to have a secret child who is involved in the zombie sex trade. <laughs> uh, should- what? Wait, as in like people are paying and stealing zombies away to have sex with them. I believe that is what's happening, but the wiki wasn't super, super clear. Gross. <laughs> Number so gross. three. Micah becomes... Not only a were leopard, but also a were tiger. Or number what? four, Jean Claude proposes, and they decide to have a big group wedding between Micah, Anita, Nathaniel, Jean Claude, and some <laughs> random were tiger. Which one of those? Which one of those didn't happen? Oh my god, this is difficult because I can totally see all of them happening. I'm gonna guess. The where leopard becomes where a tiger. No, you're wrong. I they don't... all happened. No! <laughs> it was a trick question. They were no! all real plot points in future Anita Blake novels. Oh my god. Why didn't we read the wedding book? Which one is that? I know, because I think it's really long, but they don't actually, they haven't had the wedding yet. It's still being planned. Oh. I think the next book is when John Claude proposes. And then there's a, essentially. They decide Micah, Anita, Nathaniel, and Jean Claude are the super closest, so they're gonna get married. But then there's some prophecy uh-huh. from a while ago that Anita has to marry a were tiger. So, oh my God. so they're so like Micah just becomes one. So they're like, we gotta find a were tiger. So Dev is is considered what? for the position for a little bit, but then somehow Micah becomes part were tiger. So maybe oh, so that works well, out much it's, better. It's unclear if he counts or not. Also, in the most recent novel, it turns out. <laughs> that they actually misinterpreted that prophecy. <laughs> so the were tiger thing didn't matter. <laughs> it was it was meant in a completely different way. And that is how she is now the heir to Marmi Noir. Oh my or God. something. Who knows? If you read these books, please oh explain. God. Please explain what the fuck happened. Yes, I want a detailed synopsis of the plot of this book. No, the plot of these stories from... What is the first one called? Laughing Corpse? Bloody Corpse? No, or is it just called Guilty Pleasures? It might just I can't be Guilty which Pleasures. One's the first one. I know a lot of them are named after yeah. Jean Claude's various up. businesses. Yeah, yeah. All the way from Guilty Pleasures until Book 25, whatever that one's called. Uh, Crimson wanna... Death. Double Space Times New Roman Size 12 Essay. Yeah, it's Guilty Pleasures, and then the most recent one is Crimson Death. But Ooh. think about like all the different types of sex scenes you would have to. <laughs> right as well like i would feel like the well would run dry after because how many oh, sex the well scenes never were in this runs book? dry with like, anita blay <laughs> that's true <laughs> she's always thirsty for more sex well because of her magic power that makes her thirsty for sex all the time so it's fine her magic vagina yeah which like total disclaimer like we're not at all against polyamory like oh yeah no we're also, just I'm against even... the way that sex is presented in this book and how certain people feel about it i'm not even against the uh like succubus sort of character where she has to have sex or else she'll die sort of thing like that's been Mm -hmm. done it's been done like in really fun ways but it's it's just this is exhausting this is exhausting yeah there's just so many different powers and abilities and things that make anita special yeah by the time you get to all the different sex scenes, you're like, give me a break. <laughs> right. And this is kind of like, when we first started this, you talked about how you don't really like these like long-running paranormal romances, uh, sort of series, paranormal mm-hmm. mystery, paranormal romance, uh, which the problem with these sort of series where they go on for a million books is that everything has to escalate. And when you keep escalating, you end up with fucking blue were tigers and... Mm-hmm. and swan werewolf bullshit and <laughs> were swans were swans <laughs> we've brought the were swan up so many times it's like a one off thing that just barely gets mentioned in this book but it's stuck with us yeah but the fact that it is a thing is <laughs> disturbing and mm-hmm. it's hilarious to me why 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 a were swan how how did she decide the animals that she was going to use cuz it's like okay tigers i can see werewolf that's the first one. That makes sense. That's a long-standing yeah, thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Wear tigers, wear leopards. Okay, like you're kind of keeping it in the 
animals, like, yeah, predatory predators. animals. Where rats? Uh, not sure. Where hyenas? And then like, how do giant rats. people? Do they turn into giant rats? Are they like rous's? They turn or into do they just turn into actual rats. rats? What? <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm making that up. Is that real but, life? But like, oh, cons- okay. <laughs> but like conservation of mass, they would have to, right? <laughs> Yeah, because they either have to be a giant rat or a swarm of rats. Yeah, and, and the one character they talk about as a prevalent were rat in the series is Claudia, who is like the tallest, buffest woman that Anita has ever met in her whole life. So it's like, how do you get <laughs> She's that like much six person? Foot nine, I think. Yeah, and how do you get that much person into a tiny rat body? She's just a even six if foot it nine is rat. like a giant rat that's That's still like come on give claudia a cool wear animal to turn into claudia's cool i mean she was okay but she's a woman so you know she's not as good as Anita. and mm. yeah of course not anita's blocked off all those awful things that make her female (laughs) except for her except her vagina (laughs) so of the characters in this book i mean like claudia was kind of cool but was she the one you related to the most or who was that? No, I'm trying to look up her name right now. Hold on. Give me just a second. Okay. Um, 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 I should have looked this up before, but I didn't write it down. Oh, you might know this character's name. It's the, it's the, um, the female officer who keeps trying to yeah, get involved with yeah, his yeah. boyfriends. Um, yeah, I thought. What was her name? Arnett? Yeah, Officer Arnett. Oh Is yeah, it it's Jessica? Arnett. I feel like it's Jessica, but that might just be because all I... rival women in literature are named Jessica. Yeah, Jessica Arnett, who's so sick of Anita getting all of these men and is just like over Anita being the special darling of everyone's eye. And just, <laughs> and just she just wants to date Nathaniel because he's hot. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I agree. Yeah, go and for it. And she's just like, I'm going to rescue him from Anita. And I'm like, yeah, you should. She's terrible. On board. On board. She's got she's got enough of them. She probably wouldn't notice for a while. Yeah, and that. she's, like, very helpful when um, Anita brings a couple of her guards to the office and one of them gets in a conversation with some woman who is trying to convert him, which, you know, whatever, uh, just because, like, oh, yeah. I'll go help him out. Like, she comes up to Anita and she's like, I know we don't get along, but I'm going to go help this guy out because he shouldn't have to deal with this crazy woman. Yeah. So, I mean, she's really nice. She's really helpful, mm-hmm. but... She's just over Anita yeah. shit. I was I was team Jessica Arnett. <laughs> All right, you gotta ask me now. <laughs> oh yeah. So who did you mo- <laughs> did you relate to most? Uh, well, I have two. Uh, the first one is a very one-off character, uh, but when <laughs> Anita's trying to describe someone's hair color, and she says she would have called it pale brown, but when she was young, a girl in her class had the same hair color and quote, she had informed me that it was champagne blonde, which like, that's me. I, <laughs> it's not brown. I would, I also thought that I was like, well, right, I'm, right. I'm like, it's not brown. It's blonde. It's dirty blonde. It's champagne blonde. Okay. <laughs> I'm a blonde. And I'm sorry. Like what young girl doesn't know about dirty blonde right, hair? Right. We all wanted dirty blonde hair when we were right, young. Come on. Uh, but the more serious one. The one that wasn't one one sentence uh, was Larry. <laughs> the one who was actually a character. Yeah, yeah. Book. Was Larry? Oh yeah, Larry was my Larry, second. Larry, hundred percent. Okay, so so he's he's another marshal. He's Anita's former protege, and he has a lot of like conflicted feelings about what they do. And first off, so when Anita is trying to get information out of people, she essentially brings a vampire corpse into the room to question this other vampire and uh, desecrates it so that the vampire will get scared and tell her what's going on, which is terrible. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, And Larry has issues with this. And he says, don't you understand, Anita? No one should do this. It's a horrible thing and it shouldn't be done at all. And it really shouldn't have people with badges doing it. We're the good guys and good guys don't do things like this, which Agree. Like, yeah, that's, that's a, yeah, I think that's a reasonable line in the sand to draw. Like mm-hmm. Larry is very, like he has his ethics and he, he says later something along the lines of you can't claim to be ethical if it's wishy-washy essentially. 
that if you have a belief system, mm-hmm. you have to stick to that belief system or else it doesn't mean anything. Agree there. And also... Yeah, yeah. Like, you have to have some sort of code. Yeah. So there's a moment later where they're trying to decide who's going to go out in the field and they're going to take Anita and they're not going to take Larry. And they say that, oh, we trust Anita. And Anita's narration says... If Larry followed both the guy and cop rules, he would let it go. But part of the problem was that he didn't follow those unspoken rules. And then Larry calls them on it and says, oh, are you saying that you don't trust me? Which, way to go, Larry. Like, yeah, don't follow the stupid bullshit rules about not questioning other cops when they're Mm -hmm. doing shitty things. Yeah, agreed. Team Larry. Team Larry. Yeah, when they can just declare open season on all undead. Right. Like, Larry is the hero of this book. Yeah. Larry's a good guy. I'd 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 rather go train with him, yeah. Bryce. Sorry. Not we sorry. haven't even gotten into Bryce and we're not going to because it's too much. Yeah, because Bryce he's totally like gonna come back and be some sort of villain. He was super suspicious. Right. Anyway. Oh, and the part where That's where the uh narration is like, I don't I couldn't know for sure if Bryce was really gay until I saw him in bed with another man, but I guess I'd have to take his word for it. I'm like, no, that's not That's inaccurate. That is not what you need to Mm. prove that he's gay. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, there's so much. There's so much of that in this book where. Yes. Like just questioning people's sexuality. Like Anita, shut the fuck up. No one asked you. Yeah. Uh, And then. oh, oh. You You were such a special case that if anyone ever comes to you talking to you about their sexuality and their beliefs and what they are and how they act. Right. You should just accept it. Oh, man. Uh, So. Okay. I'm trying to figure out how to. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to segue into that. Uh, Let's just go for it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Well, silver lining, I guess, was that it was kind of fun and funny to see how the series evolved from where we last left off, which, from what I can remember, reading as a high school and early college student was a very, like, just normal paranormal mystery series where a girl had there was a love triangle involved and she didn't know who she was gonna get with and then to see these characters back and just having her be with all of that I don't know and and watching the story threads I'm like wow there was a lot here that I'm kind of interested in knowing about not enough to go back and read every single book but it added a layer to this book that made me enjoy it in a way that I don't think I would have enjoyed this book at all yeah, I, if it had been a completely foreign series. I definitely feel like there was a nostalgia factor reading this where it just brought me back to, yeah. you know, years ago when I was reading it for the first time. And yeah, just kind of seeing what happened with these characters was not something I want to continue, but something I did enjoy. Um, mm-hmm. For me, I think probably my silver lining was that there were moments and and it kind of goes with yours where there were moments where I was like, yeah, this is the Anita Blake that I remember that was fun and really cool. There was like narration. Like Mm -hmm. the beginning was super good. It was great. I was so on board. Uh, But then it, you know, went off the rails Mm -hmm. around, around chapter five. (laughs) Um, Yeah. A lot of Anita's dialogue was witty and kind of this, the sort of uh, neo-noir sort of feel that I remember where yeah, it's, it's punchy. Yeah. And I was, uh, that was fun. That was fun. And I liked, um, I did mm-hmm. like, I will say, I did like the Dev and Asher drama because it was like actual yeah. drama <laughs> instead of just, Oh, and now I'm having sex with this guy. Oh, and now I'm having sex with this guy. Oh, and now I'm having sex with this guy. And yeah. I'm kind of bad about it, but I'm still going to do it. Uh, at least with like Dev and Asher, there was actual <laughs> emotions going on. Yeah, yeah. And even though it was quickly forgotten, like Dev de- does have this whole like, oh, you know, my love Asher now is being exiled because of the way he treated Anita and I'm really sad about it. And there's definitely some feelings there other than just sexual. Yeah. Um, and it also gave me my favorite burn of this book, which was uh, mm-hmm. Asher and Anita are arguing about all of this. And Asher says, Oh, are you implying that I do not do my duty for master and country, but you do? And Anita says, I'm not implying anything. I'm stating that you are beautiful and amazing and a big fucking baby. <laughs> <laughs> Which like, okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> that was good. She calls it like she sees it. <laughs> right. I was like, if we could just have more of that, this book was be would be so good. Yeah, like call people out on their shit more, Anita. You're pretty good at it. Have someone call you out on your shit. Fun times. Yeah. Good stuff. We need another character like you, Anita. 
I mean, I'm really hoping that this book, this series culminates in just this book where it's someone, maybe Larry, sitting them all down and just being like, this is what's wrong with all of you. <laughs> that can be the last book, Larry's Revenge. <laughs> so I don't think we really enjoyed much about this book, which means that there is probably something we would rather be reading. Uh, oh, did yeah. you have a, a book this week that you would recommend or have started you're looking at your bookshelf i see you looking at your bookshelf i am looking at my bookshelf you didn't prepare, totally you didn't prepare for this <laughs> you go first <laughs> okay while anna's perusing her bookshelf um i did actually have a book that i i literally would have rather been reading because it was also on my kindle uh and the time that i was reading this could have been spent reading this other book but um it's this book called finder by emma bull and emma bull's kind of a big name in urban fantasy uh she was one of the first people to do it kind of at the same time neil gaiman was kind of coming up and like um charles Mm delint stuff like that uh so around you know the 90 the 80s 90s um Mm -hmm. but i've read a couple of her other books uh and i just started reading this one and it's about this town that's like a border town between the human world and the fairy world and it's populated by elves and humans and one of them is this guy who goes by the name of orient and he has this magical ability to find things that's the name finder uh and it's like very limited like you have to ask him specifically oh where is this or where is that and he gets kind of dragged along on this murder case by this cop who is trying to uh figure out this whole like drug running sort of situation that's going on in the town um it's like just straightforward paranormal no crazy and to be fair i'm not all the way through it yet so it could go off the rails but so far it's been like a nice straightforward Mm -hmm. mystery with a little bit of kind of romance sort of stuff sprinkled in but not anything near this level um and because emma bull doesn't write series she just writes single books it doesn't have the problems with everything escalating to a crazy crazy degree that anita blake does yeah you just get your one straightforward story yeah that sounds good i'll have to look all right did you find something on your bookshelf oh yeah i thought of something actually it's not (laughs) on my bookshelf Uh, (laughs) yeah so kind of along the lines of paranormal because i don't read a ton of paranormal anymore but there is a young adult series i kind of got sucked into so it's the Jacoby series by William Ritter, and it is a young adult series, um, which is also something I don't read a lot of anymore, but dive back into every now and again. And it is a series that follows Abigail Rook, who kind of, she runs away from home, essentially, to, and ends up partnering up with Jacoby, who is a, um, essentially what could be equated to a paranormal investigator. He is a seer, and he's the only one that can interact with different types of folklore characters there's lots of fae and there's lots of um not necessarily paranormal but i mean like there is ghosts and stuff too and werewolves and things um but yeah so they go around and it's just kind of like a quirky young adult paranormal series and the last book of the series came out around halloween i want to say and i haven't gotten to it yet called the dire king and just interested to see how this all wraps up if you're looking for something that's a little bit more lighthearted, definitely no sex <laughs> because it is a young adult series but it's it's fun and and a i feel like the the genre gets bogged down a lot by these series that just end up basically angst. being romance series with yeah angst and romance but with different trappings but this this is actually mm, more focused on the story and the relationship Abigail has with her boss, Jacoby, the investigator and how she grows as an investigator and as a young woman and being away from her family and chasing adventure and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty decent books. All right. Cool. So, uh, I guess since I, yeah, since I chose this book, that means it is your turn. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Yes. I was so excited. I found this book today because I was going to suggest another one. But I was like, well, you know, it is for us at the time, again, to kind of reveal a little bit of behind the scenes of the podcast, the time we're recording this is just becoming Christmas season. The book is called Skipping Christmas by John Grisham, which I thought John Grisham only wrote like law serial drama. Yeah, that's what I thought too. But no, apparently he also writes comedy Christmas stories. But this is a short book, and I think it will tick off a lot of boxes in the category of things you hate to read. Great. Um, so, 
I will go ahead and read the Goodreads synopsis. I'm ready. Imagine a year without Christmas. No crowded shops, no corny office parties, no fruitcakes, no unwanted presents. That's just what Luther and Nora Crank have in, <laughs> Sorry, Crank. Have in mind when they decide <laughs> that just this once, they'll skip the holiday altogether. Theirs will be the only house on the street without a rooftop Frosty the Snowman. They won't be hosting their annual Christmas Eve bash. They aren't even going to have a tree. They won't need one, because come December 25th, they're setting sail on a Caribbean cruise. But, as this weary couple is about to discover, skipping Christmas brings enormous consequences, and isn't half as easy as they'd imagined. A classic tale for modern times, Skipping Christmas offers a hilarious look at the chaos and frenzy that has become part of our holiday tradition. Um, and apparently from what I've read of the reviews, it's basically all of their snooty upper middle class neighbors get really pissed off that they're not celebrating Christmas. Oh, good. <laughs> and it causes drama. <laughs> like, I mean, I already hate the conceit of, uh, eh. Isn't our modern life so fast paced and shouldn't we just sit back and relax and enjoy like <laughs> whatever. Uh, so yeah, that sounds uh, perfectly awful. Yeah, I mean at least it's Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yep. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh my gosh it actually is okay sorry this is the book the movie christmas with the cranks is based off of starring tim oh. allen and Jamie Lee curtis well, i had it no might idea actually be good it might actually be good <laughs> <laughs> you never know <laughs> yeah um, yeah wow okay so that about wraps it up for this Fortnite's podcast if you guys want to follow us you can follow us on twitter at hate readcast you can also send us a message on gmail hate readcast at gmail.com so uh yeah send us an email and explain to us exactly what happens in the rest of this series uh please submit a 12 page paper in 12 mm -hmm. point new uh times new roman point, time we will roman. give that a look double space double space mm -hmm. um and, you know, don't just cheat and make the periods a larger yeah, font. Yeah, come on, guys. We know. We because know. Because we'll need an electronic copy and we'll be able to tell. We right. we were we were both English majors. We are used to bullshitting on <laughs> papers that don't quite reach the correct length. <laughs> uh, leave those m margins at one inch, please. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, and also send us your other um, books, book suggestions for books you think we would hate. Um, because we do a lot of this. Obviously, we're not going to be rereading a book we hate, so we're only going based off of book synopsises, book synopsi, book synopsis, <laughs> and reviews. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and book reviews. So if there is, you know, something that you know for a fact that belongs on this podcast, send it our way. Subscribe to us on soundcloud or itunes or whatever podcast aggregator you have found this delightful show on in the words of laurel k hamilton sometimes you just gotta poke the badger with the spoon <laughs> i do what like that, that one i don't know <laughs> also can we talk about the fact that Loka Hamilton keeps referring to the wear people as furries. <laughs> and she needs to not do that. That's anymore. a completely different thing. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it.